And the word of our testimony, not even loving our lives unto the death, meaning that we testify about Jesus. It doesn't matter. He is the, he's the one. We overcome with him. Amen? He, he's it. Oh, my gosh. And all these things, he, he just blesses us, doesn't he? He just blesses us. We're so thrilled to have uh, uh, the opportunity to hear testimonies of each other. Guys, that's one thing that we get in church. It's one thing we get in church, and it's wonderful. And I don't know if you have ever been this guy or gal, but have you ever sat in church and these people are giving these testimonies, and you say, well, it never happens to me. Anybody like that, you know? Uh, but you just got to start opening your eyes. You just got to really look because there's more happening for you than you realize. God is not holding anything back from you. That's part of our message of the gospel is that God doesn't hold anything back from us. He has given you everything. It's what it says that pertains to life and godliness. Now let me tell you what, you have what you need. Amen? It's right there. And if you're not realizing it, you just have a blind spot somewhere. Amen? We, we blind ourselves by uh, stinking thinking. Right? And we deafen deafen ourselves. Somebody told me just the other day that they were, could not hear God and it, they haven't heard him in a long, long time. And uh, I said, well, let me tell you what, he didn't stop speaking to you. He's speaking to you right now. God is telling you something right now. And he's speaking to you. He's always there for you. You just have to break that deafness off. Amen. That deafness and that, that blindness. And, uh, you know, uh, he, Jesus came to set the captives free. Amen? To, to open the eyes of the blind. Amen? And we, we can just knock that blindness off of us. If you're not hearing from God today, just knock that blindness off. In fact, let's just do it together right now. Say this. Put your hand up here with me. Your hand's a little sore. Are you ready? We say, blindness, go. It's that easy. We can see what God is doing. We can, uh, deafness, we're doing it this way too. Deafness, go. We can hear what God is saying. God's, God's speaking to you, amen? He's not holding anything back from you. And I'm just, I, I, I just love that. I mean, it does not matter what's going on. So uh, uh, David and I were talking this morning. He said, look at all this stuff that's going on. This is crazy. You <laughs> and I were talking about it. You know, it's, it seems crazy, but you know what? What is that going to do? We're just going to keep on keeping on. Well, you know, there's a lot of things that have happened here in the last several months. And uh, it has been over the top. But I guarantee you what, we are going to make it. We will not back up. We're not going to stop. We're not going to quit. We're not going to lay down. Amen. We're going to keep going no matter what. Amen. No matter what, we're going to walk through this valley and come right out on the other side smiling. Hey, we're going to smile. We say, yay, as we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And we're going to keep saying yay, and we're not going to quit. Uh, and I want you guys to, to, to just be up. Just be up. Look, look up. Look at Jesus. you got stuff. We all got stuff. We're praying for Joe's brother. You got any word today? Joe's brother's in the, in the hospital. He's not breathing on his own. He is... Uh, just a hurting unit. He needs to be able to breathe again. Amen. So we call breath into his lungs. We call that machine off of him. And we call him healed in Jesus' name. Amen. And we just, uh, just got to keep believing for each other and with each other. Speaking life over people. That's what we do. Speak life over people. It's not, it's not false hope. Amen. Somebody got mad at me one time because I prophesied over somebody that didn't look like it, they were going to live. And I, I said, you will live and not die. And I don't give a rip what anybody said. That's what I was believing. And I got a, I got a uh, mouthful from a guy that said I was giving him false hope. Let me tell you what, guys, this is not false hope. The hope of Jesus isn't false. Amen. And when we speak life, we're speaking life no matter what. My mom did not, I didn't, we didn't get to see a miracle for her, did we? We wanted to. She saw a few during her time, but 
she wanted to go. And I mean, we didn't, we didn't get what we wanted there, but she did. <laughs> Amen. You know, and uh, you know, those things happen and it's just part of life. But I just want you guys to be encouraged today. And don't, don't look back and don't, don't, uh, don't worry about what's happened or, or in the situation you're in. Kevin has got his dad in a, in a situation and he's how old? 90? 93 in a few days. And boy, he's, uh, he's having a time. So we just lift him up in Jesus' name. Father God, we just pray for uh, Kevin and Cindy as they minister to him and help him through. Father God, for strength and power. Amen. There's a lot of stuff going on, guys. People don't realize what other people are going through. You know, many of us don't just sit down and give you a list. Amen. Uh, Julie, you want to give us your list? You know, yeah, of, of course not. But there's a lot of stuff going on, isn't there? A lot of stuff. You, you, if you have a family, you have a lot of dysfunction happening. I always say that. If you have a family, you have a dysfunctional family. And if you don't, you don't have a family. Because dysfunction is part of all of us. Nobody's perfect. Nobody's got this down. But I guarantee you what Jesus does. He's going to get us through that valley. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I had... Uh, I'm really seeing some good stuff, guys and gals. I'm excited about the, the awakening. There is an awakening. I know sometimes people just have a hard time seeing it. But, um, you know, in any of the uh, awakenings that have happened uh, before now, they didn't know they were in it. Are you with me? They didn't know. And, you know, you know I mean... I'm telling you, there's an awakening happening right now. There's an awakening, and we're part of it. And you're going to see mighty things happen here. You will. And uh, just, uh, just keep going and don't faint, amen? Keep going, because it's going to happen here. And there's a lot of people that are waking up here. But I believe in the awakening. I believe there's a, a great awakening before the end. Uh, you look at stuff and you can see end time stuff all over the place. Amen. You can see all these things that when they're, uh, uh, the governments are taking freedoms away, there's all these things going on to, to squelch the people. Uh, this, is, this is end time stuff. And uh, I believe that this isn't the end, but I believe it's the beginning of the end. And I really do. And, and uh, but before all of this happens, there will be a mighty awakening, a revival like you've never seen before. People are going to come to Jesus like we've never seen before. And I want you to have hope in that because I believe that's what's happening right now. I know Mario Murillo, he's getting ready for another huge, incredible um, uh, revival tent meetings out there in Sacramento in the heart of the, the hardest the hardest nut to crack. And that's where he's at. And I'm telling you what, he's having some great success. They have a team of 900 going out every day. A team of 900 people going out every day, getting those people to come to these meetings, getting them, feeding them, uh, getting them saved right on the street. Drug addicts just uh, getting totally delivered in one minute. I mean, good things are going on. And I mean, it's huge. That's part of the awakening. People are waking up. Church people laying down their fights. Church people saying, we're not going to fight about doctrine anymore. What a concept. What a concept. Guys, we don't have time. We do not have time to say, well, I'm right and you're wrong. We don't have time for that silliness. That, that's what made people not want to come to church. People don't want to come to church and hear you fight about doctrine. They just don't. Amen. And I don't blame them. I don't. I, I hate that part of church when people are fighting about doctrine. So we don't need to fight. Amen. I tell people all the time, you want to fight? Join the army. They need help. <laughs> Amen. They do. They need help. And uh, we're not going to do that here. We're, in the, uh, we're, we're in under the army of God. God's army is the angels. Amen. We're his family. Amen. You know, I know everybody sang the song, we're in God's army, but really we're not. We're, we're God's family. Amen. We're God's uh, uh, sons and daughters. We're his favorite kids. Amen. And the army is the angelic beings. Amen. And they're out there warring for us. Hallelujah. 
You don't have to fight except the good fight of faith. Hello. I didn't get any amens on that one. Did you? I got a yep from Courtney. Hallelujah. But it's true. We don't have to, you don't have to fight except the good fight of faith. You got to believe God. You got to trust God. We were talking about this the other night and Elizabeth and us were talking. You know, many of us have had, had people die in our lives and people check into heaven unexpectedly and people that probably shouldn't even have died, you know. And uh, I just never forget the story of Norma that went here. Some of you guys remember Norma and her son Chris went here uh, years ago and they, uh, she was just a, one of my favorite ladies. I mean, she was just a, an amazing woman of God was just healthy and one time I was I had just bought a new excursion for Mona and uh, we got a brand new excursion and it was sitting right out front and I had the sticker on it and everything and she come in the back door there or in the front door here and she said who's 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 big fancy SUV is that out there I said well I, I got to thinking oh boy here we go because a lot of people think you're, if you're in the ministry, you need to have the pastor's car curse and you can't have anything nice. And, uh, you know, that's a joke. That's not how it is, amen. God, God blesses us, amen. And uh, so she come up to me and she, she said, whose car is that? And I said, it's mine. And I looked at Norma and, uh, and she smiled and she says, I'm so happy that you're in the ministry and you have a good car. Thank God for that. That's a testimony. He said more people should really realize that it's okay for you to have something that's not. You know, it wasn't like we just went down and paid cash for it. I mean, we had to make payments on the thing, you know. <laughs> you know, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But she loved that. And this dear lady would just, she would encourage everybody. Well, she was in the hospital and uh, Chris, her son, called me. She said, hey, he said, down here, they're going to do surgery on her today. So we flew down there, Mona and I, just and there was something wrong inside. And they did the surgery, and by golly, she came through. We were so happy. We were just rejoicing. Hallelujah. Went and got her some flowers and took them to her, and she was so happy. Well, we're just happy too, and we went home. And next day, Chris called me again. He said, you better get down there. They're telling me she's going to die. I said, shut up. I don't believe you. He said, Dad, go there, please, please go. And so Mona and I got in the car and we went down there and we're, we went in and we prayed for her and, and, uh, and she flatlined in there. And, uh, four zero and all these things that they're saying and 15 nurses and doctors are flying all around and they chased us out of there and she died. She checked out of her suit right there. I, 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 I couldn't believe it. I'll tell you what, I was mad at God. I was mad. Because the day before, we laid hands on her, and she, she did fine. She made it. Amen? She made it. She was fine. And I believe she was going to come back to church and, and just be an inspiration to everybody because she was an inspiration to me. So I got mad, and I went outside, and, and um, I just told God all about it. Anybody ever do that? You ever tell God how you really feel? I want you to know what, he can take it. He can take it. You need to tell him how you really feel. We should not, that is not the fear of God being afraid to tell him how you feel. That is not anything to do. He knows how you feel anyway. Amen, he can take it. So I told him. And I mean, I told him for a long time. I was outside and I just was there and I was pacing back and forth telling God, if somebody saw me, they must have thought I was a nut. You know, but, but I was telling him. And I said, oh God, I said, you told me to lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. I was confronting God with his word. I said, you said, believers lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. You said by, there were, by, their, by your stripes, they were healed. You said this, you said this. And then you call me to do this and we do it, and she dies? What kind of a deal is that? I was telling him, by God. I was telling him. And uh, next thing you know, I was stopped for a second. He said, are you finished? 
I said, no, sir, I'm not. And I just kept going. He, he asked me that. He talks to me like that, amen? And he, he will, he'll talk to you. And he was talking to me. I said, okay. So I just went on some more. I said, well, I'm finished now, Lord, but I'm still mad. He spoke this to me. I'll never forget it. Never, as long as I He said, Ed, do you trust me with Norman? It was like something went through me. It was like the greatest peace because he spoke it to me. It was him. He wasn't mad at me. He didn't rebuke me. He didn't tell me what a jerk I was for telling him how I really feel. He gave me the greatest peace that I've ever had. And, and, and it just went, Phew! it just went into me. And he said, he said, do you trust me? <laughs> what are you going to say? Amen. How do you answer that question? I said, yes, Lord, I do. You know what, we went back in and we prayed with her son, Chris, and around her and uh, we thanked, thank God for her life. And you know what, we have to trust him, guys. We gotta trust him in these crazy situations. We gotta trust him when Glenda goes to heaven unexpectedly. We gotta tr trust him when they find Dirk, one of us, one of our people from here, gone. He was just gone. What, what is all this? You know, when Johnny's friend gets mowed down by a car, all these things, what, you know, what is going on? We just have to trust him. I'm just telling you, just say, Lord, I trust you. Speak it out loud. Come on, say it now. Say, Lord, I trust you. Say it again. Lord, I trust you. We've got to get that in our spirit. We've got to, that has to be a part of our life. We can't, we can't keep going. We can't keep uh, doing this stuff without that. If we're not trusting God and walking in love, we have nothing. Amen. I believe that's the key to life, to trust God and to walk in love. And it's a choice, both of them. They're both a choice. You have a free choice to trust God and to walk in love, amen? And he wants us to love people. He doesn't want us fighting. He wants us to love people. He wants us to love the unlovables, amen? So, well, I just uh, want to get down to the word that he gave me this week. And, and uh, it's in 1 Timothy 1 and verse 6. And uh, I just uh, took this one out of the, out of the passion. Uh, they're all good. I mean, it's just his word and it's wonderful. 1 Timothy 1.6 in the passion says, I'm writing to encourage you. Wow. Hello? Isn't that something? That's what, you know, that's why we're here. To encourage people. We need to encourage each other. Amen. I didn't say you have to be codependent and do it for them. I didn't say that. I said, we need to encourage each other. Amen. He said, I'm writing to encourage you to fan into a flame and rekindle the fire of the spiritual gift God imparted to you when I laid hands on you. That's what Paul was telling Timothy that. Amen. That is an awesome thing. And so I had to you know me, I have to look up the words and I, got, I, I like to know what the words really mean. And that word rekindle means to excite the gift or to awake the gift. Now, isn't that amazing about the awakening that's about to happen? That is happening. It's already begun, but we're gonna see some great things. We gotta awake those gifts that are inside of us. And in the King James, it's always says, it says this in the New King James too, to stir up the gift, amen? He said to stir up the gift. We need to stir the gifts up in each other, amen? Oh, what did I say? I said, it's Second Timothy, I'm sorry. I said first, it's second. I'm sorry, Second Timothy 1.6, I'm sorry. I'm not seeing it on the back screen. It's okay, just an issue there, it's okay. If I would have seen that, I, I can't see from here. I'm just, thank you, Jim, for that correction. Yeah, it's 2 Timothy 1.6. I'm sorry. So anyway, that's, it's, a, it's such a powerful thing, guys. We gotta, that, that's our job. We've got to stir each other up. Amen. We, we, we see the revival. We've seen it. We see the people. We see them. 
uh, when, when there were 700 people here for Tim's auction. 700 people, remember? It was nuts, it was crazy. We had bulldozers out there moving snow. We had cars everywhere. We had cars clear down on Mariposa. We had cars across the street. We had cars up there. We had them everywhere. That's what it's gonna look like. That's what it's gonna look like when people are coming in. People are coming from the north, the south, and the east and the west to hear the gospel, and we're all part of that. And we need to stir each other's gift up. We gotta stir each other's gift up inside of you. You've got something inside of you that is powerful and mighty and only you have it. Watch out now. See, he, he put a gift in you, many gifts. He put those gifts inside of you and we have to get them out. Hey man, we can't just sit on the gift. Did, did you ever get something? I, I tell you what, I did. Uh, somebody gave me, might have been you guys, <laughs> you gave me a, a, a box of gloves, like three pairs of work gloves. I don't know if you gave those to me or not. So, a long time ago. But I've had them like for two or three years. Somebody gave them to me. I don't know. Doesn't matter. But they just sat in my, uh, in my study. And uh, I knew I had them. If I needed them, I could go get them. But I didn't need them yet. And so I just didn't use them. And... Uh, and so those gloves were useless, really. What good were they if somebody wasn't wearing them? But it was really cool, this uh, pig roast, Josh called me up and he, the guys had the pig on and everything because Josh couldn't cook the pig this year. Alex and uh, Isaac cooked it. They did an incredible job. He says, Dad, I forgot to get gloves. I said, well, how many pairs do you need? He says, three. Amen. We got to use the gift. Amen. So I got to use my gift. Amen. Because you want brand new gloves and you want those leather gloves because you're, gonna, you're handling that pig and you can't just use some little whimsy, whimsy things. It's hot when it comes out. Hot. 180 degrees is hot to put your hand on. Amen. And so we, we, we did that. But you have gifts and you know what we're doing? We're sitting on them. People aren't using their gifts. They're doing something else. People are doing something else. They're you know what it is, is people are worried about the future. Hello, what are we worrying about the future for? The, he, the, Jesus said, don't worry about uh, tomorrow. He said, deal with what you got today because you don't even know about tomorrow. And you don't know what tomorrow's gonna bring. It, you know, it's different than what you think, I guarantee you. Have you learned that lesson yet? Because I have this little idea in my mind of how it's gonna look, anybody like me? I have this idea, and it don't look like that at all when you get there. <laughs> well, like we did that wedding yesterday, and they had this venue, and I hadn't been there. On Friday night, we did the uh, rehearsal in the park up there in, uh, in Buena Vista. And, and, uh, and uh, we, we did it in the park because the venue, they had some other wedding going on there. We couldn't do it there, so we did it in the park. So I didn't know anything what that venue looked like at all. And when I got there, it wasn't anything what I thought at all. It wasn't even, it wasn't even close to what I had in, in pictured in my mind. And you know what? That's the way life is. You know what I believe? I believe that God doesn't show us all of those things at once because we would just go tilt. Amen? You, could, you couldn't handle every good thing that God has for you. You know, he doesn't give us all that right up front. Once in a while, we'll have a vision or something. It'll be right on. It's cool. But let me tell you, let me tell you today that God has something inside of you and you've got to let it out. You've got to let it out. This is part of the awakening. It's the awakening of the gifts. That's what Tim, uh, Paul was doing with Timothy. Let me tell you what, at that time, Timothy was down. A lot of things happened to Timothy. If you read about him and read about what's going on in his church, what was going on in his life, was going on in his ministry, man. Most people would have quit, amen? But he was just down, he didn't quit. And Paul just went there to stir him up. You gotta stir up that gift. We gotta stir that gift up. We gotta say to one another, you've got a gift, let's use it. Let's get out there and start, start saying you can. Let's start knocking the tea off the can, amen? Amen? We gotta knock the tea off the can. Don't tell me you can't, you can, because you're Jesus. You're Jesus. Jesus Christ is inside of you. So his, that gift is him. Amen, that's Jesus. When I say you're Jesus, that jerks people's chains. 
I don't give a rip if it jerks your chain. It might stir up your gift if you know he's inside of you. You have the power, amen? You have the power to raise people from the dead. We believed that the night when Glenda left. We were praying, man, and we wouldn't stop. There were six or eight of us in there. We're telling her to come back in her, her body, and finally Rick started laughing. He started laughing. And he goes, guys, calm down. She don't want to come back. <laughs> he said, she stepped over and one lady had seen a line. She saw a line and Glenda was over that line dancing. That's what she saw. And we, we talked to another uh, Nancy, another Nancy, there were three Nancys there that night. And uh, our Nancy, Nancy Thompson and Mona, and they had all seen her dancing. The one lady saw the line. Stepped over. She didn't want to come back for pity's sake. She spoke it all day long. Come on now. We all had the gift there. We had a gift inside of us. You know, we were taught years ago that if somebody, you want to raise somebody from the dead, you have to have that unction inside of you. You don't just do it. You don't just go down to the morgue and start pulling people out. You know, you know that's not, not the deal. But you have to have an unction inside of you. We had it. I'm telling you what, I, I wasn't even thinking that we didn't. I wasn't thinking that she wouldn't come back. You know, we just had it. But let me tell you what, there's something that overrides us. Even overrides the gift that God gave you. Someone's choice. <laughs> and you know what? That gives me great peace. That gives me great peace that Glenda had spoke that day. That day she spoke out of her mouth that if she ever came back to life again, because she had been gone twice, if she ever came back to life again, she said she don't want to come back. That's what she said. She spoke it that day. Many people heard her. And then we, we've heard so many people tell us since then that Glenda spoke that to, the, to them. Did you hear her ever say that? Isn't that something? <laughs> but it was her choice. You have a choice. Get this, my friends. You have a choice whether to stir that gift up and get it going or not. You have a choice. It's your choice to let that gift out. It's your choice to, to be up rather than being down. It's your choice to, to be selfish or to be selfless. Amen? And to be selfless means you're going to let that gift out to help somebody. I know this. I know that each and every one of us have someone's miracle inside of us. Let me tell you what, Johnny, your testimony is so real. You heard that from a little child. To the, they think they're adults. But to us, they're a little child, right? I look at those little girls. I, I think Courtney's a little girl. So, you know, I mean, I, know, I knew her longer as a little girl than an adult. So, you know, that's how we see them. It doesn't mean they are, but I tell you what, you heard that. That was her gift coming out to give it to you. And if that didn't light your fire, your wood is wet, pal. Yeah, isn't that great? So great. Did you hear what he said? Say it again, Johnny. Come on, come on. How do you say it? Tell us. Yeah. Come on. Don't you love that? Now that don't, does that seem like a real big deal? Let me tell you, that's a big deal. That's, about, that's as big a deal as you can get right there. I'm, I'm telling you, that's a big deal. Amen. We've got, we, we've got to hear each other. We've got to let those gifts flow. Let those gifts, those girls are stirred up. Let me tell you what, we didn't worry about getting them stirred up. They're, stirred, they're stirring us up. Amen. They stir Johnny up. They make him send a picture of church every time he comes to make sure that he's going. <laughs> I love that. Uh, we need that, don't we? Come on. I mean, we all do. We all got to be stirred up by our kids, by our grandkids. This week, I got to get the privilege to go up to Laramie, Wyoming. Mona and I and uh, Melba and, and Hank and BB, that's Mona, Mona, uh, Mona's mom's dog. We all went to Laramie. <laughs> we took them with us because we didn't have any dog sitter. And so we took them with us. And they, those dogs were amazing. They just slept. 
and it was great. And uh, we went up there and saw our great granddaughter. Yep, we got to see our great granddaughter and I got to see her for the first time and hold her. And she is awesome. Joanna is her name. And she is one cool kid, man. She's beautiful, but she stirred me up. You know what? You know what? When I was holding her, I felt in my spirit, I got to do everything that I can do now for her. Are you with me? Our first, we got 25 grandkids, and now we got one great grandkid. That's nuts, but it's awesome. And I said, when I was holding her, I said, I'm going to do my part. I'm going to use my gift. Come on, you know what? That baby, Johnny, she didn't say one word to me except, stirred me up. She stirred me up. Stirred my gift up. My gift. I'm going to do everything I can to, to, to make sure that all of my kids, grandkids, and uh, great grandkids have the best life they can have. Amen. We got to do our part. Just do your part. You don't have to do something else. Come on. You're not, you, you know, you don't have to go and be some big. A senator or a president or something like that. That's not what we're talking about. But you got to do your part. You got to use your gift. Amen. Um, stir up. I'm going to just give you a few more things about it here. Stir up has so much in it. It means enthusiastic. It means to be fervent. Oh, wow. You know what fervent means? To go forward and not stop. Go and don't stop. Don't look back. Fervent. To be passionate. To be vigorous. You know what? In this awakening, the church has just been sitting there going, oh yeah, we like, you know, skinny jeans, fog machines, and stuff. You know, everybody's cool or something. That is not what church is. It's not. I don't care if you wear those. I don't care if Joe wears skinny jeans. It's up to him. But, um, <laughs> amen. But yeah, I don't care about that. I, but I do care about people being passionate about what we're doing here. Be vigorous about what we're doing. Here's one. To be wholehearted. Wholehearted about what your gift is and what your part is in this. Your whole heart sold out to what this vision is sold out to the awakening, sold out to be a part of it, and to be zealous. It means to, to be zealous. It also means fire. Wow. You got to be on fire for God. Amen? Wow. Paul was talking to Timothy here, trying to get his low burning fire stoked up again. Are you with me? We all get down. We all get down to embers, you know? Sometimes we got to just get those bellows out. <laughs> Blow some air on that thing. Get it stoked up again. Put some good wood on there and get it going. Paul was telling him it was time to take action. Amen? He was commanding Timothy to reach within himself and to begin to rekindle anew, anew the fire that was already in his heart. It's already in you guys. You don't have to get this. Are you hearing me? You don't have to get it, it's already in you. At the time Paul was ministering to Timothy, there was probably a lot of persecution going on. He was physically and emotionally exhausted from dealing with all the stuff and all the situations and all the problems that were happening in his time. That's why Paul told him to take action and rekindle the fire. You guys got the fire in you? Get your bellows out and start putting some air to it. Timothy was being encouraged to put more wood on the fire. Isn't it so true that when it's cold outside, we need to put wood on the fire? Amen. Isn't that awesome how that works? You put a few pieces of wood on that fire and it just warms you up. You know, there's nothing like a wood fire. There's nothing that warms you better than that. It's not, you know, you can stand over your forced air till you turn green. But I'll tell you what, to have a wood fire just warms you right up, doesn't it? <laughs> you put the wood on the fire. We need to actually go out, get into the wood pile and bring it in and put it on the fire. So you have something to do with this rekindling. Amen? You got to get the wood. What fires you up? Amen? You got to realize that and, and use that and go with that. 
What fires you up? You gotta take that wood. You gotta get it out of the wood pile and bring it in and put it in the stove, amen? If the fire goes out, it's a lot more lab laboring to get a new fire going than it is just to put a little kindling on and get some air blowing on that fire and put a little bit of paper or some pine needles or something in it and get it going again. Then it is to start. It's way easier than to start a brand new. You have a fire inside of you. Let's rekindle that thing today. Let's get it going, amen? Hallelujah. Are you guys okay? I just want you to be good, amen? I want you to be fired up about Jesus and what he's doing. Um, put up there uh, 1 Thessalonians 5.19 and then I will end message. I lost my glasses again. Is there a record on how many glasses you can lose? I buy those ones at a Costco three at a time. That's the problem maybe. They're too cheap. Huh? Podium. Oh. Thank you. They're right in front of me. You got to put them on to see them. First Thessalonians. Amen. God is so good, isn't he? First Thessalonians. Podium, Ed. Where did Thessalonians go in my Bible? Did I lose it? Right here. It's in here. First Thessalonians 5 and verse 19 says, really? Don't quench the spirit. You know what quench means? To put out. Don't put out the spirit. You know what? The spirit's where your gift is. In the spirit that's inside of you. Fire him. Fire him up. Don't dump water on him. Amen? Don't quench the Spirit. The Spirit of God is in you, and greater is He that's in you than He that's in the world. And you're going to see the power of the Holy Spirit work in you like never before. I just saw this. I got to obey this. I just saw this. Let's just, um, where we are, just touch people. Just touch somebody. You got to touch somebody. Amen? I don't care who you touch, don't matter. Touch somebody. And, 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 and we're going we're gonna to just rekindle this thing right now. Amen? Touch somebody. Let's rekindle this. Yes. Yes, that's great. Rekindle this. Say this with me right now. Say, Lord Jesus, I'm putting wood on the fire. And this fire is going right now. And now we're taking the bellows of the Holy Ghost. And we're blowing that air onto it. My gift is fired up. My gift is ready to use. My gift is yes and amen. You gave me gifts and I'm gonna use them for you, Lord. I'm on fire. I believe in this awakening and I know that you're gonna use me in it. My family is saved. My friends are saved. Everybody I have in contact with are saved in Jesus' name. We are fired up this day. Hallelujah. Amen? You believe it? Well, we just got to get her going. You got to tell somebody, amen? You start telling people that we're on fire, you, they'll come and watch us burn. They will. They'll come just to watch you burn. Amen? Yeah, that's right. Amen? We'll, you, you'll, you'll see it, amen, and they'll see it. So let's do this together. Now it's time. We're gonna, we're gonna receive communion today and we're gonna use this communion as communion fire.